Well, thank you very much for coming to this first official press conference since I took over. It is exactly two days after a month, and I thought I must give you a report card of our work and the progress achieved by the ministry uh, in certain critical areas of judicial reform, new legislations, and areas such as legal education. Now, the reason I was keen to speak to all of you was to tell you that some of the most important initiatives of the government actually get lost. The government tend to get lost in the shrill political rhetoric um, and therefore it is only fair that the people of India knew more about the constructive initiatives that have been taken and some of the initiatives that I will now mention about and we will give you a list of these which will be circulated to you uh, will in fact have major long-term positive results for the politics of the country as well as in the judicial system. <clears throat> as I said, I've often said in almost every fora that I go to, that rule of law will be an empty promise of the Constitution if, if we cannot ensure affordable and expeditious justice to all citizens of our country, more particularly to the marginalized. And therefore, we have taken a few concrete initiatives after evaluating threadbare in our advisory council meeting that took place day before yesterday of what were the possible solutions to the problems. I've told uh, my secretaries who have done excellent work in the past several months that we should now not be harping on problems, we should be coming up with solutions. So with that in mind, allow me just to indicate what we have done and then I'll be very happy to circulate this and I will take such other questions that you might have on issues that are a part of the note and also on issues that are not a part of the note. So <clears throat> let's talk first of judicial reforms. We know that judiciary plays an extremely important role under the Constitution as the final arbiter of competing claims of each branch of government and competing claims between litigants who are before the judiciary. But it is equally true that the common man had begun to feel that the judicial process in action was becoming expensive, that in its actual operation, people were losing faith in the system because justice was being delayed. Therefore, with a view to correcting or finding solutions to some of these perceptions, we have now decided to A, fully computerize, fully computerize the 14,290-odd subordinate and district courts in the country and integrate them through the national grid with the High Court and the Supreme Court so that there will be a seamless flow of data and information directly impacting and directly enabling the monitoring of the judicial system in the country in terms of which judge has disposed of how many cases, which judge has not disposed of cases, what were the reasons for the delay in decision of cases, so that this would all be on a web portal and it will be a seamless flow of information available to the citizen as well as available to the higher judiciary to correct the aberrations that have fallen in. So the use of the ICT framework enablement 
is an extremely important uh, element in reduction of the backlog. Now, the why I'm saying that this is very important, because access to justice is denied to people in terms of delays. And the causation of the delays in a very significant way is attributable to huge backlog and pendency of cases. New cases are not getting to be decided because the olds are yet to be uh, done away with. So the idea is use the ICT framework, make sure that time frames are monitored so that judges have, a, have both the incentive and the need to decide cases. Second, we have talked about the implementation, uh, the more effective implementation of the Gram Nayalas Act. This is a very important initiative. In 2008, we passed this act. But somehow, we could not vigorously implement it. Now, what is the Gram Nayalas Act? The Gram Nayalas Act is we will establish courts at the block levels. We already have district level courts. So this is taking justice to the doorsteps of the people. So a, de a, a development block in a district will have its own Gram Nayala. The problem was, how do we find people to man these adalats? We have now decided to write to the chief justices of the different high courts and to the chief ministers of these high courts, ask them to formulate a mechanism where we could have former judicial magistrates at the district levels who, are, who have retired or who have taken a voluntary retirement to sit in these nalas. And the other reason that we found was, was disabling the functioning of these nalas was that the prosecutors and the police people did not take them seriously because they thought they was, these were the intermediate courts. We, are therefore, we have therefore decided to write to the chief ministers of the states, asking them to instruct the, the enforcement and the prosecuting agencies and the district police authorities to depute for the purposes of the functioning of these anyalas, the officers in desired numbers and of the required rank. So we thought that the bottlenecks, time has come now to remove the bottlenecks. So we are now going to involve the chief ministers and the chief justices of the states in the vigorous implementation of the Gram Nalas Act mechanism. Third point, we are setting up under the chairmanship of the judge of the Supreme Court. We are constituting a committee which will be chaired by a judge of the Supreme Court who will oversee uh, some of these initiatives. The idea is that once a sitting judge of the Supreme Court is overseeing it, no high court judge, no district court judge, no, no judge of at any level can afford to be seen to be either not efficient enough or not <coughs> discharging uh, the judicial functions expeditiously. So a series of comprehensive measures have been announced. I I'm very happy to tell you this is something which has actually not been properly presented in the media and I would very much request you to please send out this message. In 2011, as far as the pendency of uh, reduction in the pendency uh, of backlog was, was concerned, we succeeded in a net reduction of 6 lakh cases in the country. 6 lakh cases. I know that the backlog is huge, it is 3 crore plus. But don't forget that every month there is filing of new cases also. So we've talked of net reduction, which means even after taking into consideration the new filings, the total reduction of 6 lakhs has been achieved in 2011. After we have put into place these new mechanisms that I have told you, where judicial, the Gram Nyalas will dispose of a lot of matters, so the cases that were earlier going up to the district laws and from there to the high courts in appeal will now get settled at the Lok Nyalas Act. Then, the other thing that I wanted to tell you was the legal education reforms. This is a very, very important. See, the Bar Council of India and various other people, experts in the field of legal education, have had many useful contributions to make. I have set up a committee of eminent law professors, and this, will, this is being announced um, separately, uh, which will have 
um, former attorney general uh, generals uh, on this committee. We will have people like Professor Madhav Menon, Upendra Bakshi, all eminent law professors nationally and internationally recognized. Uh, the, the ex-official, uh, on an ex-official basis, the chairman of the Bar Council of India. All these people will sit together and I have requested them that within six months they should give us their suggestions on what are the reforms in legal education which will enable us to produce the right kind of law graduates who can then be charged with taking on responsibilities and who could be groomed either to become great lawyers or great judges because we do believe that there is a gap and a mismatch between the expectations from the, uh, from the consumers of justice in terms of the quality of lawyers and judges in the making and what we actually produce. We have a very good education system and I'm not for a moment saying that uh, that has not achieved the result but there is a lot of scope for improvement and with a view to making construct, with a view to enabling all sections of society to give us a constructive suggestion. Uh, I've constituted this high-powered committee. They will be meeting and it will be serviced by one of the joint secretaries um, of the ministry. And all these top people will sit together and give me suggestions. My hope and expectation is that within six months, we will be able to introduce some concrete suggestions in legal education. This is an intergenerational effort. I mean, our succeeding generation of law students in this country can then aspire to go to the best of law schools all over the world and be able to compete with the finest minds all over the world by introducing whatever changes are still required. Now, the third and the most important point, and then we can give, ask all the questions you want. We are going to introduce the Judicial Standards and Accountability Bill. There, has, there have been reports suggesting that a particular provision is a gag order, I would like to very categorically dispel that nothing in the Judicial ac uh, Accountability Bill should be treated or construed as a gag order. There is, we, we hope to bring in a provision which will only reiterate, it will only reiterate that the Supreme Court has already stated in a number of its judgments, which is, that courts must refrain from making observations against anyone where such observations are not strictly necessary for the decision of the case before the court. That is the point I'm trying to make. It is nothing new. The Supreme Court itself has said that it is inherent and integral to judicial decorum and judicial self-restraint that judges do not make observations or pass comments not strictly required for the decision of the case. If it is required for the decision of the case, they are fully at liberty to do so. So it is not a gag order. It is reiteration of the principle that has been decided by the Supreme Court itself. So repeatedly people say, oh, what is happening? So, and I want to repeat, we remain totally irrevocably and unquestionably committed to maintaining, preserving and upholding the independence of the judiciary. We want the executive and the judiciary to be in a constructive engagement for the advancement of national goals and aspirations. There is no question of any confrontation with the judiciary. I want it to be clearly stated. No question at all. And judicial sensitivities and judicial independence will be respected in letter and in spirit. So the other, uh, there are other proposals, including the National Judicial Commission, uh, which relates to the appointment of judges. This is a work in progress. Uh, this is engaging the serious and urgent consideration of the government. Uh, we hope to make substantial progress on this as well. So I have now finished and concluded my opening statement. I have touched upon judicial reforms. So this is within 30 days of my taking over. This is the report card to the people of India through the press. Thank you.